You only go into meltdown or you only go selectively mute when it's convenient for you. Your directness and honesty is just being cold and heartless. Autistic you doesn't understand this complex social situation. So you need to be quiet and let the people who understand what the situation is talk. Due to high levels of trauma, low self-esteem, mental health and stereotypes of autism, we can sometimes be conditioned in life to take on the perceptions of other people and treat them as gospel. If someone says that you're acting a little bit weird in a social situation or you're saying the wrong thing, you're more likely to take it on because in the past you've really struggled to, to understand social situations. But there are some things that you do understand. When you try to tell people that you do understand those things, they will tell you that you don't. This is the idea of autistic gaslighting, something that perhaps you may have heard of in terms of gaslighting in uh, like narcissistic relationships where the, the person tries to make you think that you're crazy, you don't know what you're talking about, sort of um, bashing what, what reality is, is actually affecting you, bashing exactly how you're feeling and thinking just because they think that you're something else. This can be an absolutely horrible, toxic thing because it can leave you feeling inadequate, can leave you a very low self-esteem, can leave you open to being controlled, to being manipulated. And gaslighting in the context of autism, it's pretty much the same, except it's more socially acceptable. Gaslighting in terms of like a solid idea of what it is, the, the solid definition, it's the manipulation where someone tries to get others to question their reality, their memories and perceptions. So if you were saying perhaps that I saw you take that last cupcake and they say, no, I didn't like are you crazy or something. I remember when you said that you don't, you don't feel that way. I remember exactly how you said that. You must be remembering wrong because that never happened. Oh, but yeah, yeah I don't think you really get that. Like, I don't see that at all. And I think your perception of that is wrong. I don't, I don't value your perception of that. So listen to me. <laughs> this is the idea of gaslighting. Autistic people are more vulnerable to toxic and manipulative people. This is because our social differences focus on direct communication. Not necessarily words if they're nonverbal, but it tends to be straightforward communication without all that sort of difference in the way that you say things, difference in your facial expressions, your body language, all of that kind of stuff, that indirect things, they tend to be, they tend to take a bit of a, a back place to the actual information that the other person is saying. The issue with this is that it's very easy to manipulate someone who trusts what you say rather than how you say it. It kind of makes it a bit more simple because all you have to do is lie with your words. All you have to do is say things, even if you don't mean them, and even if you say them in a way that looks a little bit suspicious, we will still take you up on that. We'll still believe you because you've told us. This makes us absolutely, well, it makes us pretty vulnerable to nasty people, to people with dark tried traits, to nasty people who could really screw up your life. Having this focus on direct communication, it's a beautiful thing. It's great. It's simple. It's easy. And the people who you you give your time to and you have that direct communication, it's it's so much easier of a friendship. It's so much more clear out in the open and direct. And you don't have to do all of these crazy mind games to try and figure out why someone's saying it or in what way they're trying to say it, because they'll tell you how they feel and they'll tell you why and they'll tell you what happened and they'll tell you the actual things that have been going on. When you have someone who's a bit more indirect, um, in general, they'll be able to pick up on that stuff and they'll sort of get a, a vibe, as people say. And we do get vibes and I get vibes and I get more of those vibes because I've done so much to try and understand non-autistic people and work on my sort of indirect communication skills, my cognitive empathy. But there still is a little bit of a window for people to take advantage. 
especially if you are currently in a in a bad mental place. Because we put that focus on the words, we, we can also sometimes let their words take more precedent than how they're acting. You know, they may say that, that, that you're really, really great, good friends, uh, but they never talk to you. They don't really care about you. That every time that they talk to you, they're only talking about themselves. They're only trying to get attention from you. You know, it's it's a little bit t- more tamer the situation um, because I don't really want to go into like some really complex, perhaps unfriendly thing to the YouTube algorithm. So this means that we easily brush off these signals of of manipulation or deceit, even if we can see them. We, we exist and we communicate with the world in our own way, and sometimes it's more comfortable to go with that. And sometimes we expect other people to feel the same way, but a lot of people don't. I suppose this video could be kind of split up into two areas. You know, someone that you don't really know, someone that you kind of loose friends with, says something about about you in, in, in context of the group. Maybe you have an opinion and they know that you're autistic. And so they <laughs> they kind of gaslight you to thinking that you don't understand or that your way of thinking about the situation is inferior to the way that they do just going by the fact that you are on the autism spectrum the other side of that would be more intimate relationships things like family things like friends things like partners this is a little bit hard it can be a lot more difficult you know the other situation may be encompassing more of kind of like a a, a bullying dynamic but in in this situation, it can be really, really harmful and manipulative. You know, you may, you may have clicked on this video for a number of different reasons. Maybe you do like experience this in, in normal daily life at work and at school or like anything like that. But there will be a section of you who, who come to this video because you have been gaslit by people, people who are really close to you. And it's had massive effects on how you view yourself, how you view the world, how you view the other person. And how you view the, view the relationships, like the quality of the relationship that you think you have may be actually pretty bad. So first, um, in these sort of intimate circumstances, it's a little bit different to, to sort of the transient ones. And I think there's a lot of different pathways that you could go down in terms of bullying and in terms of, you know, things to do with work. You could, you could raise it with somebody that someone's being discriminatory in actual relationships, friendships, family partners first you need to ask them for clarity <laughs> you they should be able to sum up what they're trying to say in a few sentences and uh, if you if you are in, in in some sort of friendship relationship familial relationship and you ask them for clarity and they just never never ever seem to get to the point they may use this thing called word salads which is basically just a combination of different words accusations feelings that they have all mashed up into one sentence that really detracts from what you're actually trying to ask them. And for autistic people, this can be really damaging because it can make us feel like we don't understand things because it takes advantage of our lower processing times. So it can leave us in quite tricky situations. In these situations, we'd be particularly vulnerable. So getting clarity, that's a really, really important thing. You need to speak to multiple third parties that aren't involved with the person or at least loosely involved. You know, they don't have a relationship with them in any way. So you get a really honest sort of idea of what they think about the relationship that you have. Um, just make sure to include both sides. And uh, if, if there are some things that you're not doing the best in that relationship, then say them um, because that usually gives them a little bit more confidence that you're actually speaking to them for advice rather than asking them for emotional reassurance. Another thing is write down your experiences. You can collect evidence. You can do this in any way that you like. It could be through therapy sessions. Um, it could be through actually just writing it down or making a note of things and collect evidence in order to advocate for yourself. Now, if you are in like a narcissistic relationship, you need, I think that the best port of call is to actually research into it. Uh, there's a great channel called Dr. Ramani who, who does a lot of stuff around narcissism and it's really, really eye opening and, and has been helpful to me in, in different sort of relationships that I've had in my life. If you can advocate for yourself, I would. 
If it doesn't work, I think the best idea is to go to one of these channels, learn what, what the things do and try and transition out of that relationship. If you feel at all like you are at the threat of physical violence, if you feel like you just can't do it for the life of you, then maybe you need to get some professionals involved. Maybe you need a mediator. Maybe you need to call the police if it's a really, really bad situation. Maybe you need to contact your friends and family. There's a whole host of different things that you can do. I don't think I'm the person to tell you that. I think you should definitely go to some experts who have PhDs in psychology and like have been researching and understanding this for a long time. But I think th this can kind of give you a good framework because if, if you've tried these things and you've advocated for yourself and you've tried to get to the bottom of what they're trying to say, and you just come up short every single time and you just don't seem to be able to exit the situation, those people can be really helpful. So you can call, you, you know, you can call them out for their manipulation if you want. They're never going to admit it if they're horrible people. It's just the nature of, of, of toxicity. You know, they're not, they're not going to take, take, um, responsibility for their actions and behaviors and their words and, you know, the, all the, the, the autistic gaslighting. You can assert your space to process co complex situations. This is more more along the lines of autism because it can be really hard, even if you have a set script to go by, to actually function in these situations, especially when you've been hit by word salads, especially when you've been hit by um, lots of different things and lot, lots of gaslighting about things that never happened and things that ways that, that they interpreted that there was completely right and your your ways are wrong. It's it can be such a messy, complex situation. So being able to have an out is very important. So maybe do it in public. <laughs> Mold your day around so that you don't always have to be in their vicinity and you can actually get out there. You can go to the gym or you can exercise or you know you can do all of those kind of things. And the last thing is if if they don't change and they continue to gaslight you and make you feel horrible for being autistic, make you feel uh, just horrible in general, then you need to leave. And it's not safe for, you, safe for you for your own sanity. There may be situations where you are legally tied to somebody or situations where it's very, very difficult to cut them out of your life. Um, but there are other strategies that you can use, things like grey rocking, um, th things of that nature that you can look up definitely on one of the more specialized channels. As I said, when in doubt, contact a professional or the police if needed. I can offer my own personal advice based on what I've experienced in life, different different individuals, uh, but I'm not a licensed professional. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I don't want you to follow my advice to the T. I want this to be the ignition for you to research more into it and take information from from people who are well versed in the in the idea of toxic people and maybe add in the stuff that I've been telling you that's perhaps a little bit more autism specific. But I hope this video has been an eye opener and I hope this video has helped you and I truly hope that you are doing well whatever situation you are in and I'll see you in another episode on the Thomas Henley YouTube channel. See you later folks.